What's up guys, Dave here, hope you are well. Welcome to another arm wrestling video. Today we're going to do something pretty simple. I'm just going to sit down and have a look at last Wednesday's training footage and just talk through some of the things that I'm focusing on at the moment uh, with my project hook for the next couple of weeks. You know we're so we're about halfway through um, this project where I'm focusing entirely on, well not entirely, but primarily on developing my inside game. So let's see what I'm doing in this footage. All right, so left arm. This is up against Steve, who is a beast. Um, and I'm just trying to uh, go inside with him. Um, what I'm finding is that for me, uh, a lot of my inside game, I have to think primarily about my elbow positioning and my shoulder positioning to really get into the lanes that I need to, um, to generate any kind of power. So you should see in all of these pulls, my elbow moving all around the place. Well, just as I say that, I do a bit of outside pulling and I try and top roll Steve. But, um, trying to find the lane and the point where my elbow should be while going inside um, is pretty important, I've found, to try and get that angle where I'm cutting across uh, my opponent's arm. So let's see this. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my shoulder close to my arm so that I can use my shoulder to pull down, uh, to chop down on uh, my opponent's arm. So it's a bit of a learning process. Like a lot of things, I think in arm wrestling, you kind of have to force it for a while, even if it feels uncomfortable and weird, just to develop it. Um, oftentimes, you have to exaggerate movements in arm wrestling to train yourself that you, your body can go there um, and figure out where it feels strong. I think I, in the past I've found that primarily for pressing, to really exaggerate bringing the shoulder across and over the top of your arm, because um, it feels like you're just doing something ridiculous, but then when you watch the footage back, you realize, oh, I could have even got further behind my hand. So sometimes um, I feel that you have to exaggerate certain movements um, in your mind to actually get your body to respond and to do them. So that's often what I do with hooking. I'm, throwing my elbow around, trying to get it at certain angles to find where it slots in, basically, where I can put down some power. All right, let's find out what's going on. So up against Steve, um, out of straps. Um, looks like I'm not hooking again. I'm trying to go outside, um, but my hand really isn't strong enough to hang on and top roll Steve. Like once he starts going out as well, then we basically slip every time. So either he has to hold on to me and go into a hook while I'm top rolling. That's the only way I get a win. Let's see if that may be how I get a win here. Yeah, because he's just kind of committing to a hook and not going outside. That was a good pull. You got me. What a beast. All right, let's have a look. Again, we're going outside. Um, you can see how far across the table it is on my side. It makes um, back pressuring uh, a bit more difficult because I run out of uh, space on the pad from my elbow. And in that case, I really need to push my elbow forward to bring my arm up even higher and take more of his hand. In general, I really don't like it when my opponent comes really far across I want to drag back as hard as I can and if they're going with with that and I really quickly run out of room and it becomes kind of a posting battle and my posting's not too great um, all right come on when's this guy ever gonna start hooking oh try and go inside and I get creamed yeah that's what I need to work on all right so here you can see my elbow creeping forward trying to come to the front of the pad to cut across Steve's arm and at the same time bringing my shoulder forward as well. But in this case, Steve was just yeah, too strong. Um, kind of a high hooking position here. Again, trying to bring my elbow forward to cut across Steve's arm while pushing across the pad. Kind of directly sideways. 
Um, a little battle here. Steve starts to kings and I give up. I want to have that battle. All right, we go on left. Yeah. Finally, it looks like I'm setting up to start hooking. Let's see how we go. So elbow right at the very front of the pad, shoulder really close to my hand, trying to cut across the arm. Steve, too strong. Come on, Steve, you're making me look bad. Oh, that's what happens. I get pinned in a hook, decide to start top rolling and back pressuring. Weak, David. Weak. Uh, that's more. That's more like it. Yep. Bringing that elbow forward. You can see how, basically, at this point, my arm is at a right angle to Steve's arm, really cutting across. Um, and that's what I'm trying to achieve. Now, guys that can match with inside side pressure and joint pushing, um, that makes it really hard and it seems to make it more of a battle for elbow positioning as you're both battling to cut across or bone line the opponent. Um, and I'm finding those really technical battles, you have to be really on the ball because uh, small adjustments can really make such a big difference uh, in a hook. They call it like the man's way to arm wrestle, the man's way to win, just to see who's stronger. Well, actually, there's a lot of technical adjustments I'm finding that you can make to really make it so much more efficient. Your use of energy becomes uh, infinitely more efficient than your opponent if you can get the right angle. <clears throat> Alright, some battles between Steve and Victor. Oh, that was it. Back to me and Steve. Going inside. See me pushing my elbow forwards, trying to cut across the arm, bring the shoulder forward, and Steve too strong. Beast. So far, I am really enjoying this project. Um, it kind of opens up a new world. It's, uh, it's amazing arm wrestling. I've been doing it for nearly two years, and um, I still feel like an absolute beginner with so much to learn <laughs> starting this project on, on hooking. Um, I'm like the new guy again and uh, got some newbie pains from areas of my arm that are not conditioned to inside pulling quite yet. Um, that was really fun. I'm really enjoying it. I'm hoping that it adds a lot to my top roll as well, having the option to... Uh, I'm not restricted just to back pressure outside pulling. Um, because often there are a couple of opponents that have extremely strong hands uh, and their cup is insane. And when I set up with them and I want to go outside and out and back and to feel that pressure on my hand, it's just horrible. And, and I feel my pronation cut off before I even start. So having the option to, if I feel that in a setup, to, to be able to come inside, to find a lane inside, is something that I'm very much looking forward to. Um, at the moment, I really struggle with, if I'm focusing on hooking, to try and get around and force into a hook someone that's going outside. Unless I'm straight up much stronger than them, I just really, really struggle with that, that movement. Um, obviously, not so much if both of us are going inside, just kind of naturally falls into it. But if they're really hitting the fingers going out, my hand's not huge. And um, so, and I don't think my fingers are that strong, so my clamping pressure plus my supination and cup often is just not enough to force someone into a hook or stop their pronation out. Um, here you see Steve kind of working that at the moment. And this is me trying to hold on, trying to cup in um, Steve's pronation. And I just don't have that, that pressure yet. I think it'd be a very good pressure to develop because it would assist my top roll out of straps. If I'm taking someone's hand out of straps and they start pronating out to get a slip, then the ability to supinate in really quickly and clamp down is very helpful because it can stop that slip. So, another added bonus to this new, uh, new focus. 
Anyway, guys, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.